kind of surprised it didn't come up yet in the show. There was a safety. We God, we needed a safety, right? Um, one of the biggest ones in the league just went down, broke his leg. Earl Thomas gets carted off, uh, getting uh, leaving the field, and he kind of had a similar situation to Le'Veon Bell going into this season. He was holding out for a contract. Earl Thomas ends up showing up to camp, whereas Le'Veon continued to hold out. Earl Thomas ends up breaking his leg and on his way out, flips off his own team as he's being carted off. <laughs> have, have you ever seen that sort of uh, disrespect like in a game like that to your own team? And was it warranted? I think it was the, the first time I've seen it. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, like yeah, people are going to remember you for that. Yeah. The Seahawks fans. I, obviously, some, some people were burning his jersey already on social media. But at the end of the day, uh, that's this. This is why players hold out. This is why you gotta get your money, because at the, like he just lost mad loot. So it's funny that Le'Veon Bell is talking about coming back. Uh, if I was Le'Veon Bell, I'd, I'd I'd sit out. Yeah, as long as I can. Here's a thought that did cross my mind today, while I was thinking about the safety position. They came out, they changed the rule this year, I believe, where you can actually trade for players that are on injured reserve. And right now, I don't know how Earl Thomas comes back into that locker room, having flipped off his own team, and being really kind of that guy who's holding out but not holding out. He's playing, but he's not practicing. I know he costs a lot of money, but the Seahawks don't want to deal with that. Him injured right now, knowing full well Rodney McLeod's a free agent next year, and clearly you have no future answer at the safety position. Say it with your Do you toss the Seattle Seahawks a fifth just to get Earl Thomas in the building? Maybe restructure. Maybe he's not gonna. He's not gonna. Like, granted, he outplayed his contract. He's in a four-year, what, forty million dollar contract, something like that. Yeah. You know, maybe being injured, he knows he's not going to get that kind of money yeah. uh, elsewhere. But if you can bring him into the building for ch- for for basically a nothing pick to take him off of Seattle's hands, a la Michael Bennett, yeah. and then sign him to a friendly deal because he's coming off injury. I mean, the, 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 I mean, Elliot Shore Parks was all up on the trade for Earl Thomas after the Titans game and before he got carted off the field. I'm wondering right now if it's not even more advantageous for the Eagles to jump on a player on injured reserve that you know you can sign to a, to a long-term contract that's going to be cheaper than the open market and get him for a nothing pick. I like the long scope approach, honestly. Yeah. I mean, the thing about that, he's, where he's losing money, that's the same. He fractured the same leg. So it's like the same injury. Now uh, he's uh, it's not good for business. Teams are like, oh, you might break that leg again. So, but but is it worth a fifth round pick throwing a flyer on him? Yeah, that's that's an all pro. I'm just right saying there. from from his standpoint, his his market is shot right now. Yeah, his market is shot. Seattle's not going to want to deal with him. Why wouldn't you do it? I just it's the w- same. Re- it's the same reason you made the trade for Michael Bennett. I just want to do it for the fact that you have. Potentially, Brandon Graham and Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas and, and are the fi- same. Finally, team. that guy that we were eh, Brandon Graham, Earl Thomas. Brandon Graham, Earl Thomas. And they Imagine, hugged. Listen, it, it, <laughs> I, I, honest to God, if Earl Thomas was healthy, I would have thrown that second round pick at Seattle. We got two. I would have fastballed that thing at Seattle. Yeah, especially get, now. Yeah, uh, yeah. But now that he's injured, maybe it would be advantageous. You know. It's funny. Trade for a player on injured reserve so you have him for neck there. And because what are you going to do? You don't have a safety on this team to replace Rodney McLeod. And Rodney McLeod is a, guy, is a free agent right. next year. That's one less draft pick and or free you're agent gonna to end, worry about. It, it, you're either going to draft a guy with a pick and have him starting right away, or you are going to overpay for a safety in free agency anyway. Is, is McLeod a free agent after this season? I, I think he's got one more year, but it's the it's it's, it's the money, it's the big pay. Yes, you're paying big money, yeah. big yeah. money. So, uh, in other words, may, maybe he's not a free agent at the end of the year. That's my bad, but probably would have been. Yeah, because the Eagles aren't keeping him for that kind of money. It's interesting that uh, Uncle Andy, Fat Uncle Andy, uh, had a was trying to work a trade out for so Earl low Thomas blow there. too. Was he real? Was he yeah. real? Yeah, it was in the works. Hmm. Uncle Andy, up to no good. That, was Mr. anything Fat like reported Man. on I'll the details of what he was willing yeah. to give up, or yeah, it was I just kind of? Like... I think he was going to give up that second. That second? It was in the talks. 
Mm. You know how Uncle, Uncle Andy is slick. Don't let him. Don't don't let him fool you. By the way, Pat, this is not in the red. Patrick Mahomes. It is. It is. Okay, continue. We'll, we'll wait. Um, next. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Gruden has been having a tough start to the season. Gruden. Gruden coming back into uh, coming back into the NFL after spending all the time in the booth. He was uh, heard in a, in a quote earlier this um, after the Chicago Bears uh, beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was heard saying, damn, and I quote, damn, Khalil Mack had another strip sack? He asked rhetorically to the reporters there. And I just, I don't understand. Am I, am I the only one, I can't be, that realized that what a big mistake John Gruden made at the beginning of the season? Like, how is he the only one that doesn't realize that he made an enormous mistake in the beginning of the season and let him go? That's, that's and he's already been quoted. Sorry, go. He's already been quoted in saying that it's such a hard, it's so hard to find a good pass rusher in this league. When you've got a guy, he has uh, five sacks and four forced fumbles in the first four games of the season. It's Talk about having an impact. It's ridiculous. I mean, I said that as soon as it happened. It's like it's one of the biggest mistakes you could do. You you lose your locker room that way because everyone's looking at you like you just traded away the best player on this team, and that possibly the best defender in the NFL, possibly the NFL uh, MVP defensively. Yeah. Clearly, right now. Yeah. Clearly so I mean, is. now your team is lacking a pass rush, and you could have had Khalil Mack, and you didn't give him the money. The- you got to pay your players. <coughs> The, the only way that Gruden saves face in this entire situation is if the two first-round picks that he got in return for Khalil Mack hit and hit big. I mean, hit big. Mm. And that is if he hasn't already lost the locker room completely by then. Because it's gonna, it, it is going to take some time to get the, to see the fruits. Because we don't judge first round picks on their first year, right? No. So we're talking five, six years down the line before we can adequately assess whether this trade was worth it or not. Mm-hmm. Five or six years of John Gruden doing this when day one he's practically lost the locker room. I do you think he sold on uh, Derek Carr. You think he's holding those two in the chamber to maybe move up, get get another quarterback. That would be. Absurd. It would yeah, be stupid, but I, but I, I could see him wanting to start with his own quarterback, though. Just but, but but you just you just, you just you just traded Khalil Mack for a quarterback that you already had. You already had one, Justin. Part of the reason why he took the Oakland job was to work with Carr. You know, he he wanted to come in and work with a quarterback that he thought was cerebral and that he didn't have to go and get his own. Yeah. Part of the reason why he was willing to come back was to because. He already had his quarterback into place. If he tries to flip Derek Carr, <laughs> then he just pulled one over the entire Davis family yeah. and is just robbing them for the next decade. He's getting paid any, anyway. And, that, and that's the other thing about how you, you're like, how can John Gruden, everybody knows except John Gruden. John Gruden knows he's locked in for the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a guarantee. What was that? A $100 million $100 contract? Million. For 10 years. That's crazy. He's not going anywhere. I mean, if coaches can get guaranteed money and make stupid moves like that, then some players should get their guaranteed money, man. I, again, when that next CBA hits, you watch. That's going to be the big t- talking point, guaranteed contracts. He gave Kirk Cousins a guaranteed con- Way to go, Minnesota. He screwed it up. I guarantee you every uh, every other owner was calling Ziggy Wolf and being like, what, dude, dude, what, what are you, you doing? What are you no. doing, man? Yeah. No. Why Why would you do that? That's our bargaining chip for, the, chip for the next CBA, and you're just handing out guaranteed contracts willy-nilly to Kirk, Kirk Coupon's cousins? Get the hell out of here. What else you got? All right, so is this where you were going to go with this? Because uh, one Pat Mahomes, who has been absolutely on fire for the Chiefs to start the season. Fire, fire. Fire. Uh, my dude has a voice doppelganger on Sesame Street. Just wait one second. I got. It. Uh, but uh, but uh, I mean, I, I actually, you know, I mean, we ran the play. I was getting through my reads, and I, I scrambled to the left, and then I kind of realized everyone else was on the other side of the field. Hello, this is Kermit the Frog. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that is not a spot-on Kermit the Frog. When you look at Pat Mahomes, is that the voice you're expecting to hear? Pat, Pat no, Mahomes no. Can, <laughs> sound, can sound like Elmo for all I care. <laughs> that dude is must-see TV right now. Yeah. I was having a conversation with my father because he's like, man, I heard the kid's pretty good. I have a friend who's a diehard Kansas City Chiefs fan, and he just he's on cloud nine right now. He's 
he's practically crying over this guy. Over the, what, how many touchdown passes? And I said, dude, the touchdown passes don't even begin to explain it. Like, this guy has magic. I mean, I have not been, Fitz magic. Not not Fitz magic. This kid is must see TV from the here on out. It doesn't matter. Like I got the Direct TV package. It doesn't matter if the Cowboys or the Giants or the Redskins are playing. Chiefs are playing. I'm watching it. You can't take. You can't blink with this kid. Mm -hmm. He's rolling out of the pocket, escaping the blitz, and then throwing a first down with his left hand. Yeah, that I was. Mean, unreal. There, are, there yeah, are passes. Crazy. There are plays that you thought were dead. There are passes that you thought were incomplete. That he's making it happen. Mm -hmm. And as far as his arm strength, it's very. It's ridiculous. For, for, for me, it's very reminiscent of Mike Vick, actually, who like the dude so effortlessly can just launch the ball like three quarters of the field. And Patrick Mahomes has that same sort of arm strength where it just looks like it's just kind of flicking out of his hand, but the dude's just launching the ball. That's a, that's an interesting comparison, too, because Michael Vick in his second tour with the NFL, start, you know, after he got out of prison yeah. and started with Andy Reid. He's a bigger Mike Vick. Said he regretted all that time that he didn't spend studying and didn't watch tape and he didn't really care down in Atlanta. And who was Jim Mora Jr. would put like DVDs or a hundred dollar bill in the DVD of the, of, the, of the highlights or the tape that he was supposed to, to watch. See if he would even... And when he got the DVD back, the hundred dollar bill would still be in there because he knew he wasn't watching it. Yeah. And he regretted all that because when he got to Andy Reid, you saw Michael Vick blossom into the quarterback that he was supposed to be. A guy who could escape the pocket, make plays with his legs when he needed to, but a guy who looked down the field first. Mm -hmm. You've almost got Michael Vick 2.0 in an Andy Reid taught, coached, and groomed system that's quarterback for. Oh my God, that kid. Andy Reid is honestly one of the better QB coaches that yes. has existed in this league. Yes. For all the quarterbacks that he has built throughout. That I kid, mean, go back to Brett Favre. Well, that, you said Brett Favre. That's where I was going to go. Yeah. Uh, he, he's doing some Favre esque type throws uh, you look at him at texas tech well, he, he was he was he played like outside the system because he had the arm talent to do so right like his launching points were where he throws the ball he could he could his feet could be crossed he could be like sidearm um but his father was a professional baseball player played for i believe the twins okay um so he's got that baseball background but he's got a hell of a arm dude like that play where he he transferred the ball he's He's got Von Miller breathing down his neck. He's got the ball in his right hand, switches it to his left, mm -hmm. lofts it like That's alley oops. That's just instinctual it. thinking. That instinctual. Wasn't like, yeah. And he's throwing across his body. He's doing things that you tell quarterbacks not to do, but then he's completing them Gets it done. with accuracy. Yeah. And then having fun with it. Yeah. And then having, he looks like uh, Steph Curry's daughter, like grown up <laughs> as a man. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I, I love to see new talent in the league and uh i respect it yeah. there was you know a I mean? there was a point in time three years ago where the thought did cross my mind like where is the future of the league going once the peyton mannings and the drew breezes and the tom brady's of the nfl decide to move on the ben roethlisberger's the eli mannings the aaron Rodgers. it's such it's such a quarterback driven league what happens when all these guys move on where who, who are they going to be replaced with the you know, the, the, the Russell Wilsons, like, okay, yeah, and who? The Carson Cam Wentz. Newtons, okay, yeah, who? And then it's such, it's it, it's honestly great for the league to see this influx of such good, young quarterback talent, whether it be Mahomes, Carson Wentz, Jared Goff. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson. Uh, Darnold. Dar Darnold can develop in the, you know, hopefully, you know, the Jets get their, you know, what together. Uh uh, Jared Goff, you say him? Yeah, Jared Goff. Um, who, who's a kid? In, I almost said Manziel. A uh, gr Grappolo. Uh, oh, no, no, no. You're talking about uh, the, the Baker Mayfield. Yeah, Baker, Baker Mayfield. Mayfield. Baker Thank Mayfield. You. Like, I feel like the league's in good hands with this young... Because it almost seems like they've all come out in the last, like, two two to three years. The league's in good hands with these quarterbacks, man. And it's it's funny because you, you're starting to see that that, that spread system. Like, yeah. these, these spread quarterbacks actually succeed. And the, the cool thing about it is you look at Andy Reid, like, meshing the spread offense with the West Coast offense mm -hmm. with all this flair in, like, motions. And, you know, he Andy Reid has got, like, the most Madden-like 
you know, team at it. Like he's got these guys are crazy. These and this team that he's got right now is gonna save his career for another. He can go on like another five or ten years with with this kind of talent. That's that's the one thing that gives me hope. Kind of kind of bringing at least this around the league topic back to the beginning of the the, the entire show. And that is the Eagles are two and two. They've looked good at times. They look bad at times. Who in the league, though, besides the Chiefs and besides the Rams, has really stood out to you? Like the Patriots have had good games and they've had bad games. The Vikings have had good games and bad games. You yeah. know who's surprising this year? Who? Where did the Miami Dolphins come oh, from? They came man? back to earth this week. This week. Yeah. They came back. But what I'm saying is, like, every team has had their good games and bad games so far. So while a quarter of the season may be over and the and the and the, and the league is and, and the league is trying or the Eagles are trying to find their identity, like it's not like everybody else is lighting the world on fire either. It, it, yeah. Except for the Chiefs and the Rams yeah. right now. I mean, the league is beating themselves up right now. Yeah. There's a lot of average football going on, and uh, a lot of teams are two and two out there. So. It's it's gotta you gotta see who I, I mean the good thing for us is our division we're right there in the thick of it yeah you know what I mean I used to pound the table nothing above the repeat now I'm pounding the table and just win the division <laughs> just win the division nothing above the <laughs> NFC East division <laughs> at least that'll get you into the playoffs we'll host the game just win the division <laughs> go ahead um, so we have a new king in the record books this week. One Mr. 107-year-old Adam Vinatieri has officially kicked more field goals than any other kicker in history. Do we have a kicker going in the first ballot of the Hall of Fame? 100%. 100%? 100%. Without a, if if uh, Morton Anderson is in the Hall of Fame. was that, that wasn't first ballot, though, right? No, that wasn't first ballot, but there's also another kicker, Jan Stoward, Stewart, something like that, for the, of the Kansas City Chiefs in there. Yeah. Adam Vinatieri, without One, a doubt. Two Super Bowls. Well, not it's not only the amount of points and how long he's done it, but it's like that's what started the Patriots dynasty. Yeah, that kick against John Gruden in, yeah. in 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 the uh, what was that the Tuck Rule game? Is that yep. what they is that what they call it in the snow to propel them to the Super Bowl? Yeah. And then that last minute field goal to win them the Super Bowl against the Rams to get to for, for them to go all the way. Tom Brady's first Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and then the follow it up next year against the uh, against so the clutch. Carolina Panthers. It was. And, I mean, the guy's still the guy's great. money. The yeah. guy's money. He, he he's all gray haired. Yeah, dude. And that, he's still getting it done. Dude's eating applesauce on the sideline. You know, <laughs> he's coming out of the uh, old folks' home, just making kicks. <laughs> you know, that's hundred percent. I think first ballot. Yeah. And th- and that's unusual for a kicker, but he's a special circumstance. Okay. Okay. And uh, finally, to wrap it up, Mr. Sammy Sleeves. <laughs> Sammy Sleeves used to be, he's, he's the $20 million man this year. Well, at least he was. Uh, he was demoted to, to third string and will ne- uh, lose nearly $275,000 in a game bonus for each game he misses. If he misses the rest of the season, it doesn't dress for the rest of the season, he'll ultimately end up losing $4 million. Still netting a whopping $16 million for doing absolutely nothing. Do you miss him? <laughs> $16 million, even as it stands, is a drop in the bucket of the amount of money that Sam Bradford has unbelievably made in his career mm-hmm. for achieving zero. Yep. Achie- you look at mediocrity or mediocre quarterback in the dictionary, you will see his a picture of Sam Bradford's cross-eyed face there. And somehow that guy, at the end, at the when his career is over, will end up be making more money oh, than any man. NFL player ever, over nothing, yeah. over nothing. So losing losing out a, a two hundred fifty thousand dollars per game, whatever, he's good. Can you guys think of a as at least as many players as you can think of a Mount Rushmore of players that have stolen the most money from the league? With Sam Bradford being on, uh, be ju- ju- Justin's nodding, nodding yes. There, dude. Albert Hainsworth has to be on there somewhere. Ooh. But, uh, yeah. but Sammy Bradford, I mean, he got the he got that QB contract before, you know, the you know when rookies used to get paid. He got one like his first couple years, mm-hmm. and he's been getting paid ever since. Yep. Like that dude. And he went 500 what one time I think in his whole career. <laughs> he's never never he's never if had he a has. winning never had a winning uh, record ever. record. Yeah, never. And you're, and you're right. He, he was the last quarterback to really get that first overall. He's super but, paid, man. Dude, he's super paid. And he's so basic. Like he's he's like 
imagine him walking into the locker room and that's that's your savior. Like he's gonna bring you to the playoffs. The guy who's Sam, we're you, over here. The guy that's looking at you <laughs> cockeyed and like not trying to make eye contact, not trying to like be rah rah. Like that's the guy that's that's the guy. Like you could throw with a the long sleeves. Ball. That's the guy wearing a blouse. <laughs> this, this this quarter he, this quarterback who looks like the bottom half of Taylor Swift wearing a blouse in the huddle is going to lead your offense. Get the hell out. Of I mean, he had short sleeves in high school, up high and tight. When did you decide as a man <laughs> that you were gonna wear? These long Dan Fout sleeves. Do you remember the one picture uh, that came out Carson's rookie year where they all went to the beach and Car- that's what Car- I'm talking Carson's about. Sitting there all jacked. Everyone's He's wearing the full length like uh, the f- sleeve bathing suit. Everyone's got their shirt off. This dude's got like a a, a water shirt on. He's a never nude. He's afraid of it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, is that is that it for around the league? That's all we got. All right, let's.